What up, Green Gang? Have you ever needed an industrial grade humidifier but didn't want to pay the four to four hundred and fifty dollars for one? Stay tuned, and we'll show you exactly how to make one for around two hundred bucks, with mostly supplies from your local area, and probably one thing you'll have to order online. Here's some things you're gonna need. I got a four-inch desk fan from Vornado, a ten-head pond fogger mister ultrasonic with the floats. I also have a four inch PVC pipe. I also have a float valve to make sure that the humidifier stays filled for the entire time. I also got a fancy you know, drain cover to make it look a little better, but you don't have to get that. And a 17 gallon Husky tote or any uh, you know tough tote that you can find locally, as well as you're gonna need a drill, a hole saw bit and a regular drill bit. You're also going to need a knife and some silicone or glue to glue the PVC pipe and fan in place. But before we get too far into it, I want to give a huge shout out to Mars Hydro for sponsoring part of this video. Mars Hydro has tons of grow equipment in their product line and their customer service and equipment keep improving over time. Here's the FC6500, a 730 watt bar style light that gets a usable photon efficiency of 2.38, which is extremely great. This light is equipped with close to 5000K and 3000K full spectrum white LEDs as well as 660 nanometer Osram reds. The driver can also be installed either inside or outside the tent and it comes with brackets for both. This is by far their best light in my opinion. Their 5x5 tent has quality construction and I appreciate the zipper flap that will prevent the light leaks when the zipper gets a little worn from use. And they also recently put out a fan filter controller combo that controls the exhaust fan via temp or humidity readings, which is super convenient. Once again, thanks Mars Hydro for sponsoring part of this video. And if you're looking for some grow equipment, check out Mars Hydro, link in the description, and make sure to use code GOBLIN510 to save at checkout. So now we need to make marks for the holes for the fan and the PVC pipe and where we're gonna place those. I like placing the fan on the opposite side of the PVC pipe and I'm putting the PVC pipe to the side here because the 10 head mist uh, humidifier fog head thing is going to be placed in the center of the container. So therefore, uh, you know, if we put the PVC in the center all the way to the bottom, it's going to come in conflict with the uh, ultrasonic fogger. Now you can see that uh, we're cutting the holes out. I recommend using a really sharp knife and going slow. If you cut too quickly on this type of plastic, uh, you have the possibility of cracking it and then you need to use uh, more silicone or glue to you know, patch up your lid or go buy another lid. Uh, now you wanna shave off the little you know, pieces of plastic on the edge of the cut make sure it's a clean cut and you want to do the same thing for the fan now when you have all these uh, holes cut in here you want to make sure that you clean all the plastic off quite well because you don't want any pieces of uh, foreign plastic left in the container for when you do put the ultrasonic fogger in there uh, it's going to not you know damage your you know most expensive part of the humidifier Now that we got the holes cut, I'm going to install the float valves so that the humidifier keeps filling itself up of RO water. Now that's kind of important. You want to really fill your humidifier with the, like distilled or RO water so there's no minerals in it. Because if you don't and you use the hum and the humidifier has to run quite a bit, you may develop a film on a lot of electronics and other things and it's not a great, uh, great idea to use heavy mineral water in a humidifier. After the uh, float valve is installed, I want to drill a few holes in this PVC pipe. And as you can see, I've marked uh, right below where the lid is. And I just want to grow, you know, go around the entire pipe and drill some holes in it, some large holes in it. 
This allows the humidity to exit through these holes and through the PVC pipe when air is pushed into the box via the fan. Now when you are drilling holes in this PVC, you want to, as you can see, go little by little because the, the drill likes to grab on the PVC and torque quite a bit. So just, you know, tap it in. And you want to do this all the way around the pipe. I ended up getting four holes into this pipe. Next, we're going to want to uh, silicone or caulk up or glue the fan and PVC pipe onto the humidifier lid. Now, if you do use what I'm using here, the uh, Dyna Flex, uh, you're going to want to wait a full 24 hours before putting water in here to make sure that there's enough of a skin on this uh, glues, caulking, silicone type stuff so that water doesn't enter in and prevent it from curing all the way. When you do get a bead on there, as you can see, you want to you know make sure that bead's in full contact of the lid and also the PVC and or fan. That way you have a good seal and we can push the humidity where we want it to go. If you do get any of the stuff on part of the lid, just get a paper towel and uh, get it a little bit wet and you can wipe away the stuff that uh, you got in the places you didn't want. Now when the glue's all dried, you can fill it up and put the pond fog mister in there with the floats so that it floats near the surface. It has to do this so it can operate at full capacity. And when you turn on both the fan and the ultrasonic mister, as you can see, it creates a ton of humidity. This is going to be plenty for both my uh, smaller room that the humidifier is in and also the larger room on the other side of the wall. Now I do have a, an intake fan that will take air from the smaller room and put it into the larger room. So that's how I'm getting that humidity over there. Last but not least, you're going to want a controller of some sort to turn on and off the humidifier when you need it. Now you can get a really great one from Inkbird. All the uh, items that you need will be down in links in the description, except for a few items that are, you know, just cheaper to get locally. But you are going to need some kind of controller device for that. Now, like I said, you can use the Inkbird. You can also use the AC Infinity controller that they recently came out with, with their uh, attachment where you can plug in any 120 volt um, accessory into it. You can use that to turn on your large humidifier. You can also use a smart plug in a, you know, Raspberry Pi type system or um, something else like I've made. Uh, I'm going to be pretty soon doing a full redo video on my Raspberry Pi system and automation so that uh, more and more people can understand how I put that together. But that's how I'm currently controlling the humidifier. But you're gonna have to choose one of those three options. Uh, if you're using this larger type humidifier, I'm gonna assume you have a larger type space. So I would go with the Inkbird controller. The AC Infinity is a really great controller, but uh, that's more like a condensed package. I like it being all AC Infinity, you know, an AC Infinity humidifier, the tent, the, the whole package. And this is more uh, if you're growing in a large space, like a 10 by 10 room or a couple of uh, spaces where you can transfer air between. Thanks for checking out the video, Green Gang. If you want to support the channel a little more, check out the merch and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Later.